All right, I recently made a video about how Z index works, like the stacking context and how all the rules of Z index play with each other. And that's all well and good, but if you're using Z index in an actual project, maybe it's a large project where you have a whole bunch of different moving parts, at least in this example, I have a footer, a header that goes over the text, I have a drop down with an overlay right here. And if you have a web application or just a big website with a whole bunch of different parts and pages, then it can be kind of confusing if you have all these different Z indexes. They can kind of just get mixed up with each other if somebody just adds a new element and just puts in a Z index of a giant number so that it goes on top of everything. And then somebody adds another element uh, that just overwrites this. Especially if you're working with multiple people, you can add a new element that just goes underneath another element if you don't really have any idea what the other Z indexes in the project are doing. So in large projects like this, you kind of need a little bit more forethought put into the Z indexes so you know where everything's positioned correctly. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. And the easiest way I've found to do it, at least in my projects, is to just give everything a variable. So I'm going to do this with CSS variables. If you're using SAS or CSS in JavaScript with something like React and styled components, then you can figure out how to do it yourself. Just create variables with the different Z index values. But I'm just gonna use these CSS custom properties. I have a video on this if you're not as familiar with this. But let's start by defining a whole bunch of variables. So let's say we have one that's Z content is going to be one. Z footer is two. And Z header is three. And so on. And this way you're just going to have all the different Z index values up here at the top where you can see everything. And so you're not confused about any random property down here. And so Maybe you want to make some bug fix as well. Say uh, something should go behind the overlay that is currently not. Then you can just come up here to the top and change this and then put it behind the overlay. And just having everything in one place just makes it so much easier to manage everything. And of course, this is kind of a simplistic example. Maybe you'd have even more stuff like modals and pop-ups that might come up. And you have to think, do I want these to be under something like a drop down or not? And there are a few different ways to do these. So as you can see, I've just used numbers one through five here, but some people, they like to use these in hundreds. So all of these with hundreds right here. And that's just because there's no decimal places in Z index. You can't put 5.5 .5 if you want something between five and six. So if it's easier for you, you can just do this. So maybe you're thinking, okay, I might have something randomly pop up that needs to be between header and the overlay. And I can just put something that's 350 right here. So it gives you a little bit more room. So it gives you a little bit more margin right here. But personally, I don't really use it that often. So I just go with the single digits right here. And to be honest, I don't really have that many separate Z index values in my project. So you might be thinking that for a gigantic website, there's going to be just tons and tons and tons of Z index uh, variables right here, but it hasn't really been the case for me. So I'll have maybe 10 maximum variables right here. And besides that, I just don't really need to set that many separate Z index values. If you do have tons and tons of them on your project, that might be a sign that you need to simplify things a little bit more because for me personally, I just don't need that many different things. You're just in introducing too much complexity into your project otherwise. So I have maybe 10, maybe a little bit more variables at any given time. Let me just go through and change all of these. Okay, so now you can see I finished everything. Everything is still working as you would imagine, just with the variables instead of numbers. And so if I do want to edit something in the future, let's say I want the footer to be above this drop down overlay, then I can just change it right here and it's instantly fixed. 
This can be a little bit annoying if you want to like reorganize these every single time. So you might have to bump these down. But to be honest, it's not really a big deal for me because I don't really change the Z-index layouts that often. So it's not a huge issue for me. And just by looking up here, you can just at a glance see the order of everything in your layout. And you shouldn't be confused at all which elements come before which elements. Especially if you're working on a team with a large project, this is gonna make it much easier collaborating with other people because you can just send them here, all the variables, and have this be the law about which Z index goes where. This will help you avoid these gigantic random numbers like 999 everywhere, and so you just know what everything is on top of at all times. So that's what I do on my projects at least. I know there's different ways of doing Z index at people have come up with, but this is just my way of doing it. This is how I like doing it. And having done some projects like this, they have all turned out fine. We haven't had to worry about Z-Index that much. So this is what I will recommend if you're kind of struggling looking for a way to fit this in inside one of your projects.